After six blocks, they turned down Crossman Street, stopping at the first house, the one that sat on the corner, an older house with a bunch of cars parked in the yard, barrel grills and big wheels in the driveway, a mess, but the home of the munchy master, Miss Cece. Miss Cece had been the neighborhood candy lady since the Low Cut's parents were kids. She was known for making sure everybody got a fair shot at sweet treats because she knew not everybody could get to the corner store. There wasn't one on the corner of Crossman. Actually, there wasn't one within five blocks, so she had to be it. And the best part about Miss Cece was that she was open 24 hours a day. With Bit leading the way, the Locuts beelined up her obstacle course of a driveway and rang the doorbell, which chimed a melodic yawn like an old man just waking up. The Locuts waited nervously, but Bit, full of fire and impatience, rang the bell again. And again. Come on, he growled. Ain't nobody got all day. Chill, Francie said. You know she moves slow. Sure enough, a few seconds later, they heard the sound of Miss Cece's slippers slowly sliding across the floor, and her voice oozing through the wooden door. I'm coming, I'm coming. Don't poop your pants. Trista smiled at that because... Miss Cece always mentioned pooping, as if the only people who ever rang her bell were people in desperate need of a bathroom. The door swung open, and there she was. A small lady, jet black wig sitting on top of her head, like a hat she'd purposely cocked to the side. The hair was too dark, especially compared to the few silver hairs springing from her chin. She wore a turquoise sweatsuit, the sleeves and legs cut off, threads hanging like a blue-green spider web. Her ankles were swollen, and so were her cheeks. If it weren't for the hair and the bumpy freckles, her face would have looked like a baby's. Her voice, on the other hand, sounded like a truck engine. Look who it is, eeny, meeny, miny, and mo," Miss Cece said, pointing at each of them. What y'all want? Well, John John started, because John John was usually the one who spoke for the crew. The nice one. He dug in his pocket, opened his hand, showing all the silver and copper. We got 90 cents and we need candy, Miss Cece, Bit blurted. Then clapping his hands together, he repeated, we need candy. Bit. Francie's voice was a warning to calm down, but Bit's ears didn't hear it that way. What? We do, and we in a rush. He tapped his wrist where there was no watch, checked it like checking a pulse. A live one for sure. Don't be rude, Trista said, calm. Like, too calm. So calm that even Miss Cece took a step back. Bit quieted down. Huff rolled his wrist and muttered, Go ahead, John John. We got 90 cents and we need as much candy as you can give us, John John explained. Miss Cece looked at the four of them, a stair step from John John, the tallest, down to Bit. Do I want to know what y'all up to? She asked, and they just looked at her like she hadn't asked it. Like she hadn't said anything, so she acted like she hadn't said anything either. Wait right here. The thing about Miss Cece's house was that kids could never go in unsupervised. Even though she knew them and their parents, she was always very careful about young people in her home buying candy, because it was basically the plot of every abduction story she'd ever watched and she didn't want people thinking she was doing that, because she wasn't. So the low cuts had to wait at the door another few minutes until Miss Cece returned with a small card table. Then she set the table up outside the house, then pulled boxes of candy from a small closet right by the front door, where most people would hang their coats. She set the boxes up on the table. Okay, today in the penny, nickel, and dime categories, we got the old stuff. You always say that when we come here. Don't nobody want no stale candy, Miss Cece, Bit said, fighting himself to cool his tone. It's not stale, Britain. It's just older styles of candy, like how them Michael Jordan sneakers y'all be paying all that money for keep getting remade. That's what this is. Retro candy. Hard to get and used to cost only a penny apiece when I was a little girl, but I gotta charge y'all four cents more. Attitude tax. Bit cocked his head. Miss Cece cocked hers right back. Let that be a lesson, son. Plus, everything costs more over time. Inflation, Francie said. 
Sounds more like deflation, Bit grumbled under his breath, patting his pockets. What you say? Miss Cece asked, adding the last box to the lineup on the table. Nothing, John John subbed in for Bit. Okay, y'all know the rundown, Miss Cece said. I got Mary Janes, Tootsie Rolls, Squirrel Nut Zippers. Bit did his best to trap his laugh, but a pfft slipped from his mouth. No matter how tough and tight he was, Squirrel Nut Zippers broke him every time. Let her finish, Francie said through her own giggles. Squirrel Nut Zippers, Miss Cece repeated, then continued with the list. Lifesavers, individually wrapped, bit of honeys, Charleston chews, bazooka bubblegum, and she popped back into the closet, mumbling to herself, then popped back out. I think that's it in terms of bang for your buck. They leaned over the table looking at all the candy, trying to decide which was the right candy to get. Francie finally spoke up. What you think, Bit? Oh, now y'all care what I think, he snapped back. Don't be petty all your life. That was from John John. We just know you know what to do with it better than us, Francie explained. You know how to use it? Exactly, Trista said, scratching her head. Miss Cece covered her ears. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Bit turned to her. I mean, you said this candy from when you were young, right? Miss Cece pulled her hands away from her face. That's right. So, which was your favorite? Miss Cece surveyed the table. Hmm. It'd have to be a tie between the Mary Janes and the Lifesavers. I mean, that peanut butter mix with syrup and the Mary Janes was like heaven. But the pure sugar of the Lifesavers was, to little Cecilia, a Lifesaver. So we'll take as many as both as you can get. Miss Cece started to count them out, and a few seconds later, there were 18 pieces of candy in front of them. Nine Mary Janes, nine Lifesavers. John John let the coins fall into Miss Cece's hands, bit scooping up the candy. Later, Miss Cece, he said, already walking away. Boy, one of these days you're going to learn some manners, she clapped back. Tell your mama I'm praying for her. Matter of fact, I'm praying for all your mama's knuckleheads. Low cuts, Francie said, smiling. Right, low cuts, short cuts, whatever. You'll always be knuckleheads to me. Come on, Bit was at the end of the driveway, rocking back and forth antsy. We running out of time.